Hello and welcome to the BYU Family History Library webinar series. We're glad you could join us today. I'm Bryant and I'll be your host for this webinar. Please make sure your microphones and web cameras are disabled during the presentation to provide for a smooth recording. If you have technical difficulties during the presentation, during the webinar, please use the chat box and I can address your concerns. You're welcome to use the chat box during the webinar for comments and insights. However, all questions will be addressed at the end of the presentation. Our next webinar is next week on uh, December 2nd. And that will that webinar will is still to be announced. And so we will get that schedule out this week. If you'd like to access a previous webinar, please visit our webinar index on our website or search on our YouTube channel. All of our webinars are recorded and uploaded by the following Monday for your convenience. We also post links to recordings and updates on our Facebook and Twitter accounts. For today's webinar, we are pleased to hear from Brianne Ballard, who will be giving a presentation on di digital storytelling with Google Earth projects. Brianne Ballard is a wife, mother of five, a registered nurse, and an avid family historian. She married her wonderful husband over 10 years ago, and they have five amazing kids. She graduated from the BYU College of Nursing in 2007 and worked in labor and delivery for seven plus years. Brianne began learning about geneolo genealogy as a child, enjoyed learning about it in college, and became passionate about it in 2014. She believes in the power of family connections and that family history is for everyone. As such, she loves teaching others about the joy that is genealogy. One such teaching outreach is done with her friend Kimberly and their website, genealogypals.com. And Brianne, if you're ready, we'll turn the time over to you. Great, thank you so much for having me. I'm happy to be here tonight. And thank you to all of you who have taken time out of your Thanksgiving preparations to be here. I'm really excited to show you this fun new tool that I've found recently. So like Brian said, this is digital storytelling with Google Earth Projects. Tonight, we're going to talk about a little bit about why we tell stories, how storytelling helps build connections with family members, and how to tell a digital multimedia story with Google Earth Projects. The whole goal of these presentations is to really just give some life and some depth to all of the, the research that you do in your family history and really make it meaningful and exciting to share with others in your family. I love this quote by Brene Brown. She said, maybe stories are just data with a soul. And it kind of reminds me of the difference between genealogy research and study is a vital part of what we do as family historians. But family history becomes so much more exciting when we can piece together all the details we found and create a story that really makes our ancestors become um, more than just names and dates and places. What we're going to do today is really going to help create these stories and make the names, places, and people come to life. We're going to give these facts a soul. So why digital storytelling? Digital storytelling, like any other storytelling, has a really, has a good beneficial effect on its listeners. Storytelling can help listeners develop empathy. It can help them build emotional connections with these family members that they're learning about. It helps the creator. I know when I create these projects, it really helps me kind of organize all the facts and the stories in my own mind and create like this timeline that makes helps me as a family historian to learn about these people as well. What we're gonna do, um, sorry, stories experienced through different types of media, whether listened to, seen, read, et cetera, um, 
these are all ways that it can help the listener take in the information in a way that they will remember it. In these Google projects, we will be able to connect digital places, photos, videos, written information, all into one place to create these really fun multimedia presentations. What stories can you tell with a Google Earth project? Google Earth projects are so versatile. You can tell as much of a story or as narrow of a story as you want. The more details you know about a person's history, the better a story you can build. But you can do everything from, from an, an entire life story, create a timeline and a story that way, or you can show, show your grandchildren around your neighborhood to show them what it was like in your neighborhood growing up. Like I said, just be super creative and there are so many possibilities that you can do with these Google projects. So just a, a brief overview of the three different versions of Google Earth. I know when I was getting to know Google Earth, it, it's a little tricky to keep track of what version of Google Earth does what. Um, today we're going to use the web version. So that's the version that you can um, that you access on your desktop or your laptop through a web browser. This is a Google product, so it's going to work best on Chrome, but you can use other browsers as well. And so you're aware, this is the only version that you can create a project. The desktop version is it's called Google Earth Pro. You can download it to your laptop or computer and it has a lot of features. The desktop version is really the whole package, but again, they all do different things. So on the desktop version, you can't create these projects. You can share them and view them in Google Earth Pro, but they kind of lose some of their um, the multimedia aspect of it gets a little bit lost. And for me, I feel like it loses a little bit in presentation quality. And then the last version of Google Earth is the version that you can access on a phone or tablet. Phones and tablets can view the projects, but they can't be created. So again, when you're creating these projects, you're going to use the web version of Google Earth. So to start with, we're going to go to, we're going to go to google.com forward slash earth. And when you get here, you're going to want to come up to the top right, this blue button that says launch earth. It takes a second to load, and then you will see the Earth. So to start off with, I wanted to just show you all a little bit of a sample project that I've been working on so you kind of get an idea of what we're talking about here and the, the things that you can create. So I made a project about my great grandma, Evelyn Hulse. If I click on that project and click present, it will fly me to starting out in Wellsville, Utah, where my great grandpa was born. I added a little bit of information about him and then we can fly over to where my great where her mother was born in Paradise, Utah. I added a little bit of a story about where they met. And again, as you're noticing on this, uh, this right-hand side, we've got some pictures, we've got text, 
And that's what we'll be talking about today is how to find these locations and customize them to help you tell your story. Again, you can add old photos and we're just flying around these different places. You can also add text. So if you have quite a bit of a history that you wanna share or your own words, you can insert a slide to add lots of text. And then we're back to earth and browsing these places. More text. Um, let's see. You'll also see, kind of as we're browsing through, that's where she went to high school. This is a little bit about how she met her husband and where they got married. I wanna get to, there's one with a video. So they moved up to a place called Amalga, um, called that because of the Amalgamated Sugar Company, sugar factory that he worked at when they were there. Um, there's video. I have some other videos in this presentation of where my where they lived. I've been able to visit that and I took a video while I was there. So you can add videos and we'll talk about later. So again, so many options for texts and links and videos and pictures to just kind of create these really fun stories. And again, it can be an entire life story like I've done here, or, um, or you can just simply go through a neighborhood that was special or meaningful to you. So to start out with, I want to come over here and go through a little orientation of the features over here on the left side. So if you click on these three lines, you'll see search, Voyager, project, map style. And we'll go through all of those because they are the same thing that you'll see here. So here's our search. Search is obviously where you're going to find these locations, cities, landmarks, places that you want to add to your story. And then Voyager is also kind of fun. These are Google projects that have already been created and they have so many different topics. You can visit national parks, animals, culture, geography, travel, education. There's so many ways to use these projects. So if you want to get some ideas for things that you can do with your own projects, Voyager is also a really good place to go. So if we come back here, this is our dice. It's just gonna take us to the Maldives, apparently. Um, that's just a fun tool. This place marker is where the projects are kept. So these are a few of my recent projects. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Map style you can change. So if I zoom out here, you can kind of see, I'm gonna go, sorry, I'm gonna go to a different location that you can see this a little bit better. Let's roll the dice again. We'll go to Spain. So you can change what you see on these maps. If you want nothing on here and to just see the land, you can do that. You can add the borders and names of cities. This will add in the roads. So again, it's just your preference, what you want to be able to see when you're doing these presentations, or you can completely customize it down here. If you wanna see the clouds, the places, the roads, the landmarks, things like that. So that's that tab. And then last of all over here on this left side is 
measure distance and area. So for those of you who are interested in proving that you really did walk five miles uphill both ways to get to school every day, you can use this tool to start at one location and go to the next and it will tell you how far that is. That's also useful if you have a life story that says we lived about a mile northeast of town. If you're not sure exactly where that location is, that at least you can measure it out and kind of get a general idea of where those places are. If that helps, you can change the measurement system that you're using. And then when you're done with that, you can click done. Unfortunately, it does not show elevation. So you can't prove the elevation part of that story, but you can prove that it was five miles to get to school. Okay, so to the project, if I click on this projects tab, we're gonna create a new project. The first thing it's gonna ask us is where we want to save this project. I use Google Drive a lot, so I usually click Google Drive. If you have been working on a project and it's not over here in your recent, then you can open from Google Drive and keep working on the project. That's one of my favorite things about these projects is that even after you share them, they can still evolve. So you can reorder things or add things and it automatically updates for those that have the link that you're sharing with. So I use Google Drive but you can also create a KML file. Those are the files that Google Earth uses to um, on its platforms, whether it's mobile or web or, or the desktop version. So you can also do it creating a KML file. And I'm gonna create mine in Drive. We're gonna make a sample project. And just so you also know, um, if you decide to do your project in Drive and realize later that you want to export it to, say, Google Earth Pro, you can also click these buttons and say export as KML. So you're not committing to one or the other. You can't go from KML to Drive, as far as I know, but you can export as a KML later if you decide to create yours in Drive. So also know that you can import a KML file from Google Earth into the web version that we're using right here. So I'm not gonna go into that unless there's a question, but just know that that's a possibility. When you're in Google Earth Pro, you can click something that says safe place as and it will export it as a KML file and then you can just upload it here. So we are gonna start out and give our project a title. So if you click on that, we'll say sample project. And then you can also give it a description. We'll use a lot of the places that I use from the sample project. So we'll just say, this is the life story of Evelyn. Pulse. And you can, again, you can make whatever description, description you want. And then we're gonna start building the story with features. So I'm gonna click here on new feature and it's gonna give me a few options. There we go, that looks better. Okay, so we have the option to search to add a place, add a place mark, draw a line or shape, or add a full screen slide. So to start with, I'm going to search for Wellsville, Utah. And it will fly me to Wellsville. And notice right here on the right hand side, Google automatically gives you some pictures and description 
You can even look through points of interest in these places that you choose. And if that information is helpful for your project, you're welcome to use those. Otherwise, like I said, I'm gonna show you how to customize these boxes over here to tell your story. So we're gonna add Wellsville to the project. You can change the place title if you wanted to name it as birthplace of so-and-so or this is the farm. You can give it whatever title you want. I'm gonna save it to our sample project and you'll see it come up right here. And then you can, and then you can decide how you want the view to be. You can tilt it and make it 3D. If that's what you want to do. Um, let's see. And then I want to show you, well, I'll tell you, add place mark and draw a line or shape. I actually don't use typically from here but I do use them in other places. So for example, if I want to find where Evelyn lived, her farm in Buell, Idaho, if I tell Google, find Evelyn's farm in, well, in Buell, Idaho, it's not going to be able to take me to the right place. So I'm gonna to go to Buell and it will fly me to Buell. And then again, I'm going to get this out of the way. And I know where the farm is. So I can navigate myself. To where I need to go. Sorry about this. Sorry, I will find it. Hang on one second. Okay, we're out here. Okay, so I'm gonna come out here. So it, get, it can get me to the city, but then if I can navigate myself, here we are. This is where Evelyn and her family farmed. This is where I'm gonna add my place marker. So I found my way here. And now I can use this add place marker to drop that place marker and then it will ask me to give it a title. So I can say, and add, save that and add that to my project as well. You can also draw lines and shapes. So let me show you, Evelyn was buried in the Wellsville City Cemetery. So I'm gonna use my search to get there. And when I get there, again, I'm gonna close out of this and then I can use this draw liner shape to outline the cemetery. And then again, we can give it a title and save it to our project. And then once it's there, if I also wanted to add a place mark as well, to point out exactly where she's about right here, then I can add that place marker as well. And save it. So those are the common features. Again, there's also the full screen slide. If I add that in, we can give it a title. 
and you can come up with your own text or you can, I did a lot of copying and pasting from some published um, history of hers. And then I think it's really fun that you can use a color for your slide, or you can also click this camera right here and you can have a media background as well. So you can choose a picture and that picture will be your background. So those are the main features. Once you've added all your features, then you can rearrange them if you need to. For example, say I forgot that she went to South Cash High School and I want to put that in my story. I can fly over there and I know that this is the same place, South Cash Middle School, used to be South Cash High School. I can add this to my project. And when you add features, they always come down here to the bottom. If I click right here on these lines, then I can put them back, rearrange them the way I want to. So I can put it right here where it fits better in my story. So no, that's an option too. Like I said, it's very, easy to mix and match and add things and edit these stories. I just wanna go over the media. So if I hover over one of my features, I can either choose to modify, edit it or delete it. I'm gonna edit this feature. And then it's gonna ask me basically, do you, do you want to keep the information that Google already had on the side or do you want to replace it? And we're going to replace it. And again, here's this camera box again. If I click on that camera, it will give me several options of media that I can add. And I just wanted to go through some of these options. You can upload from your computer. So things that I have saved on my computer, I can go in and add those things, upload them, share them. And then they can sit here and you can add multiple photos and, and media to these. So there's upload. Upload is really good for images. I haven't had a lot of luck with audio and video through upload. It doesn't seem to want to take MP4 or um, I think I tried another format, but it didn't really work. So I use upload primarily for, for pictures. You can also do a Google image search. So if you wanted to add a picture, like I said, the Evelyn and her family were sugar beet farmers. If I wanted to say sugar beets and show my viewers, what a sugar beet looks like. I can Google search it, choose a photo, select that, and that will come up in my, in my reel of photos as well. You can also use YouTube. YouTube has just about anything you could possibly think of. And I like to use like a general search for for historical context. In a general Google search, it's highly unlikely you're gonna find something specifically that relates specifically about the ancestor or the person that you're sharing the story about. But again, if, we're, if we want to know more about sugar beet farming, then I can search that and maybe I can find something that's relevant again. So these are kind of just fun things to expand on your story and maybe give it some historical context. The best way to add your own videos that I found is using your YouTube videos. So if you have a YouTube channel, anyone with a Google account can have a YouTube channel. Sorry, I don't think that's exclusive, but it, this is connected to my YouTube channel. 
And so it will draw these videos that I have on that channel and I can use them here. So I can select. And this will happen whether it's public. So if you're, if you want these videos to be public that anybody on YouTube can see, that's fine. If you're a little leery of that, like I am, then you can also, when you're uploading your video, you can still mark it unlisted. So nobody's going to be able to find it, but it's just a good landing place again, that you can draw from and share and then use them here in these projects. So that's video. Like I said, that's the best way I found to do video. And then if we come back out here, you can also draw media from your Google Drive. It can access your Google Drive and you can pick if you have photos there, your Google Photos will come up here as well. I haven't had a whole lot of luck with URL, so I'm not going to speak to that too much. The only other thing that I have had to struggle with a little bit was um, audio. That is one benefit if you're familiar with Google Earth Pro, you can do sightseeing tours, which are kind of similar to what we're doing here. But if you um, if you have Google Earth Pro in those sightseeing tours, you can do some recording and some audio recording. I haven't had a the best sorry the best way to do audio that I have found is to save it to my drive and use a link. So if I have this test MP3 that I have saved in my drive, there's my MP3. And then I can right click on this and say, get link. And it will generate a link for me that I can copy. and paste into this text box. So if you really have some good audios, it's kind of a workaround, but this is the best way that I found to make that work. So I think that covers all the different kinds of media that you can add. Like I said, I love that these, there are so many options to give you a whole variety of ways to tell this story. Just one thing real quick here, this info box. This small info box will look like what Google put up here. And that's what it will look like when you present the project. You can also have the option to have no box or you can do a large info box. This is just my personal preference. I like the way it looks and it just takes up that whole side. So let me just make sure I think I've covered what I wanted to. One last thing I wanted to show you is that if you come out to this projects page and pin it, then all of these Whenever you're browsing, it will come up. All these people, all these places will just pop up on your map. So if you're in the area, you'll automatically see these. So it's kind of fun if you have multiple projects on different family members that you're researching, you can kind of decide what you can see and you, it kind of gives a visual and overlap of, of how that person's interactions mixed with this person's um, and it's just kind of a fun feature just so you know so those places can stay up on your your google earth all the time so the last thing i want to show you is sharing 
because that's the important part. We want to be able to share these with family members. And the way you do that is coming up to this person with a plus mark. Click on that. And it will give you some options. You can add a, an email address here. You can also, sorry. So if I add an email address, it will also come up over here and ask you if you want this person to be able to edit your project or if you want them to just be able to view that project. So that's an option, or you can come down here and change it to anyone with a link. So if you would prefer to just share links, you can do that as well. Again, it'll ask you if you want to share with anyone with a link or if it's restricted. And again, you have your choice between viewer and editor. And again, so it will send either that link or the email to the person that you want to show it to, and they should be able to use that link to get to your project. And then they just have to push present. And it will show just like the project that I was showing you before, they can scroll through and tell your story. And if they get interested in a particular spot, they can also do their own exploring. So if I wanted to look around over here, you can click on this guy right here and drag him to any spot in blue. And that's how you can get to the street view and actually look around. And again, once they're done exploring and looking, then they can just go click next from our table of contents over here. And it will just pick right up where the story left off and go to the next place. And there you have it. Thank you so much again for being here. I really, really appreciate it. And I believe I can take some questions if you have any. Awesome, thanks Grant. It looks like we do have some questions in the chat box. Um, the first says, can you save to a flash drive, save the project to a flash drive? I would imagine, yes. So I would do that. I think you should be able to do that through Drive, but I think the more direct way would, to, would be to export as a KML file, and then you can save that KML file to your flash drive. Awesome. And then um, Dorothy asked, can this be used in a PowerPoint presentation? Let me think. I've never done it that way. I think that's why they added the feature, the slide feature, is so that you don't have to if that makes sense. If, if I used it in a PowerPoint presentation, I would imagine that I would just use that share and create a link and then copy and paste the link to the project into your PowerPoint presentation, if that makes sense. Yeah, awesome. And then Wilbur asks, do you have a Google Earth training book and website? I don't. I honestly just learned by playing around, but that would be a fun thing to be able to create. Yeah, and I'm, I'm sure they have um, Google Earth trainings online as well. Absolutely. I know there were a few webinars that, that addressed Google Earth, um, but yeah, I'm sure there are plenty of, oh, and if I could, I should have pointed it out to you. On the page where we were at, there is actually also a spot way down at the bottom that says watch tutorial. And it will go through a lot of the same things that we've talked about tonight to teach you how to use it. That makes sense. Awesome. 
And then Sarah asks, is there an issue with copyright when you add these YouTube videos or a Google image? Yes, I thank you. I'm glad somebody brought that up. I will be honest, I am not an expert on copyright. <laughs> So I, but it does say in there, there was a spot that says, make sure you have copyright. So I would just use my best internet manners. And when you can, definitely for sure ask permission. The YouTube videos, I feel like they're up there. Um, the photos get a little bit tricky. Anyway, that's really all I can say about that. Cause like I said, I am not a copyright expert, so I don't know exactly what to tell you, but I would just do my best to get permission um, when you feel like you need to, or when you're taking things from, from a place that's not your own personal collection. If that's helpful, <laughs> I'm sorry, that's not more, more helpful. But yeah, that is something definitely to think about. And also think about the fact that this is mostly being shared among your family. So I don't think you'll get in too much of an issue, like I said, since it's being shared among family. Great. And another question, can people who who you send your story to open your video and audio files in the story and hear and see them or is there some sort of invite process so that's a little bit of what we covered at the very end you'll have to mess with those permissions that was one of the things that we selected is if you want to restrict it or you can restrict those files to only people who have the link. So as long as they have the link, they should be fine if you've made that the restriction or if you have that setting as you're making those. So you kind of just want to play with those. It's in that same screen where we were saying whether or not we wanted people to be viewers or editors, that kind of a thing. It's all in there. So as long as that is, you've given permission that anyone with the link will be able to access it, you should be fine. Great. And Jarley asks, can you choose a color for the place pins so each family <coughs> could have its own color? Color? Yes, absolutely. I should have showed you that. There definitely is. And it was right under, I believe it's under the text box. You can see you can actually use different pins, the one with a star on it, or I mean, they have different pins that you can use. And then up in the, in the top right of that same box, you can change the color for the pin. So yeah, there's definitely some space for some color coding. Great. And then Kathy asks, uh, where is South Cash Middle School? That is in, it's in Cache Valley. It's east of Weldsville. I don't know exactly what city it belongs to, but it's in Cache Valley, Utah. Awesome. And then uh, Susan Rogers asks, will Brian please say again when this will be uploaded to the web? Um, Susan, usually we upload this within in within the next couple of days. So it'll probably up, be uploaded tomorrow or Friday. And that will be on our YouTube channel as well as our website, which is shown here, fh.lib.byu.edu. And then Frank asks, um, can you just give a quick display of the presentation again? Which part of the presentation? Good question. Uh, for which part of the presentation did you mean? The slides I was showing at the beginning or like the sample project that I was showing? Okay. 
Uh, just okay, the so am I good to share my screen again? Yeah, go for it. So this is the sample project I was showing. And then if I present it. Is this what he was hoping to see? So again, it just goes through these slides and I can also skip to um, other places. I think it's fun. You can also show, if you wanna go in and start with the the street view, you can you can ask it to go ahead and just show that street view as the first thing you see. So that's the home. And then here's my video that I made when I went to their house a few years ago. It is miraculous, it's still there. So I'm not sure exactly what he was wanting to see. Um, so if you wanted to see something specific, for sure, let me know. But again, this is the sample project. And like I said, it just follows her history. Ending with um, where she's buried. Is that good? I think that should be okay. good. And Frank, and Frank, if you, if there is anything else you'd like us to show then please let us know. Um, Sarah also asks, can you add background music to a project? Music, not that I'm aware of. If you had a specific song that you wanted to play separately, you could do the audio file, like I showed you with those links in the text box. That is the one bummer thing about these projects is the lack of audio. So unfortunately, not that I'm aware of, but if you had a recording of a certain song that was meaningful and could be attached to this story, then yes, you could um, add the link to the audio file, but it wouldn't automatically play in the background. I suppose while it, because I do believe it opens in another tab. So it would open in another tab and then the, the person watching the presentation could play it while they continued to browse. But that's the only way that I know of to kind of make that work. Awesome, that's, that's a good question. Yeah, that is. And, and Dorothy asks, to, uh, see, to see the project, a viewer would have to click on the table of contents to advance to the next slide. Is that correct? There's a table of contents if they wanted to skip around. Otherwise, I just typically use on the same bar with the table of contents, there are arrows. And you can just arrow back and forth, forward or backward. That's usually what I use. Great. And it looks like that is all the questions in the chat box. Okay. So awesome. Thanks so much, Brand, for presenting. Thank you for having me. It was a pleasure. Of course. And just a reminder about our webinar coming up next week. Um, I had the old schedule up at the beginning of the webinar, but I put it, put the new December one up. Um, and that'll be on the second. Next week on Wednesday, genealogy is the life and death matter, moving beyond the obvious records with James Tanner. And that'll be at the same time at 5.30 p.m. So thanks again, one, thanks once again, everyone for joining us. And we hope you all have a great day.